All right, so what I'm going to do here as a follow-up is we're going to get rid of all these signals that are covering this crossover section from the sidings and we're going to make this all covered by the signals here at the siding exits so there won't be any separate signals at the crossover once I delete my signals I uh, hit the F2 to, to save the changes um, and then I can start putting down my new signals now I I don't have dwarfs that are going to cover the left hand side here of the signal of the siding excuse me um, because we have three different tracks that we can go down from this side and I don't have a dwarf in the CX CSX signals that goes to three tracks so we're gonna switch and use the short three head three track signal for the sidings and uh, th tall three head signals for the main lines so we're gonna put a three head two track here with link one and link two on the other side we're going to do a three head three track so we're going to do a short three head three track and now I'm not cutting or or uh, you know I'm just trying to replace signals that were already in place so I shouldn't have to do any uh, splitting and welding but I'm just going to try and make sure that I place my signals in front of the uh, stop points that I created earlier and we'll come back and adjust where all the links are here in a minute so this is a tall three head three track link one straight ahead link two through the crossover and link three to the diverging and then here we're gonna do uh, well I need to use a two track not a three track so let me switch that link one straight ahead and link two onto the diverging route and now from the other side uh, on the right hand track here we have the one two possible options straight ahead or into the siding so we'll use a three head two track here because I know this siding is going to be a slow speed and I need the three head for the slow speed indicator or the three head for the slow speed aspect. Now on this side I've got one, two, three, four possible ways I can go. So we're going to use a three head four track. Link one straight ahead. Link two I'll put over through the crossing. Link three onto one of the sidings and link four onto the other siding. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing from our diverging route because it can have the same options. There's four options for it. So one, two, three, and four. So that's what our different signals mean, and this is how you choose what you're going to do. Um, naturally, the track selection is kind of limited. I mean, if you're covering, if you've got three options that you can go through, um, you're going to use a three track. If you got two options you're going to have available to you or two possible ways for your train to go, you're going to use a, a two track or a 2T signal. So that's pretty standardized. I mean, there's not a lot of options there. Now, the difference is whether you use a two head, a one head, or a three head signal. And again, that's all based on the r rules that that particular um, railroad line uses there'll be some that you'd never use a three head on because they just don't use that aspect or any aspects that require three lights
but CSX does. So whenever you have a slow speed track involved, you should use a three head. So I'm just checking all my links here to make sure they're all inside of the ribbons. Just like before. A monotonous but necessary step is to go through and check every link of every signal to make sure that you're not crossing over any boundaries and you haven't fouled any other signals with your link placements. I'm just adjusting these with regard to my stop points that I created earlier to make sure that my zero links are in the correct ribbon. Check our links from the other side here. And as you can see, I was way off with that one. And if I had left that like that and not gone through and checked these, uh, that signal would not work properly. probably would never clear. Now one thing is with these signals, the way that I'm setting them up now is um, there's no longer any signal in front of them. So they will never clear because there's no signal in front of them, but there is a portal. So once the train goes through the portal, the signals will clear. Um, but with no signal in front of them, you know, as the train crosses into the, the block, that block goes on forever. So these signals would always show as being occupied once a train goes by them. All right, so here we are with our signals, and now I'm going to adjust my speeds on the signals, and I'll make it 30 and 15. And the same for this one. I'm going to tell it that you need to slow down to 30 for the crossover, and 15 if you're going into the diverging route. And then on these guys, there's only the one length that I'm going to adjust, 15. This one we're going to do 15, and then from the opposite direction, we're going to have uh, four links. So we're going to have link number two uses the crossover, so that's going to go to 30, and the other two go into siding, so they're both going to be set to 15, so we get the correct ac aspect. Same on this one. And then this one's just going to have two links, so we're just going to change the bottom one to 15. Okay, so now we've got all our speed limits set up. We're ready to run a test.